All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this four tier laundry basket organizer. You can use them for shoes, toys, whatever you want to keep organized, clutter free. Just keep it in here and it helps keep everything nice and separated and organized. Um, I try to keep it as DIY friendly as possible by using pocket hole joinery. And it's super simple. There's really not that much to them for what they are. Uh, and they actually surprisingly hold a lot more weight than what most people think. So stay tuned and I actually do a test on how much strength that they do hold. Oh. The easiest way that I do this, I'm going to try to explain this to you and then I'm actually going to do it and then you can see what I'm doing. But this laundry basket is nine and a quarter tall. So for each organizer on tiers, so if it's a one tier, I add, of course, it's going to, for every one tier, I add 12 inches to each size. So since I'm making a four tier, of course, 12 times four is 48 or four foot. The reason being is because there's an inch and a half slide that's going to go up underneath here and it's going to be closer to 12. And like I said, I like to add or leave about an inch for that to be able to sag or, you know, move up and down just a little bit. So of course, um, I can lay this out and I can show you exactly what I mean by that. So the first piece that we need to cut on this is the sides. I always like to start with the sides because that's also how tall it's going to be. Since it's a 48 inch tall or four foot laundry basket organizer, it's gonna be 46 and a half inches. The reason being is because I'm gonna have a top and a bottom piece of three quarter and that's an inch and a half. I like to do that so there's not a big gap at the top. It all makes sense once I start putting everything together. So the next thing we need to do is we need to cut for the back panel. We've already have the two sides. It's just not split down the center, but we have the height of that. So the next piece, of course, the back panel needs to be the same height, but we need to be 18 inches wide, but we'll wait until we go move into the table saw until we get all the big pieces broke down. So what we need to do is we need to cut this back panel with the rest of the plywood to 46 and a half to match the sides. This is what you should be left with. You should be left with a back panel that's cut to 46 and a half, and you should be left with the two sides, which is cut at 46 and a half. Of course, it's by 48 because that's how wide the sheet was. This was just cut down with the track stall a little bit further just to yield less waste. You can keep it at the full sheet. I just didn't just to make it easier for the video. You got to remember that you have a piece that's at 46 and a half by 48 inches. I like to measure it just to make sure. I already know which way it goes. But I've made the mistake where I've cut it too close. I mean, you know, like I said, you're going to be cutting these at 23 inches. If you cut the wrong side, the 46 and a half inch way, and you rip it down that side, you're only going to have about after the blade goes through and cuts out each side, you're only going to have like an eighth of an inch. And I've seen plywood more than an eighth of an inch. So do yourself a favor and just take the extra time and just make sure that you are cutting the correct way. Now cut your 18 inch back. So now that we have the back cut and we have the two sides cut, now we need to cut the stretchers. The stretchers are the part of the cabinet that helps everything come together of all the pieces. They also allow you to be able to have somewhat of a floor and then also it gives you something to attach the tabletop to. So I will cut those since I already have my saw at 18 inches. Okay, so now that we got all the pieces sanded, now we need to go ahead and add the pocket hole screws. I like to add the pocket hole screws to the back side of the cabinet. I don't like to do it in the inside because whenever you pull the baskets out, you can see the pocket hole screws from the inside. So what I like to do is since we're putting the pocket hole screws on the back and the back's already gonna look somewhat kind of bad with the pocket hole screws you want to also add the bad piece of the plywood because both sides of this plywood is not perfect so i want to take the worst side of the plywood and i'll add that to the back and actually the side that i had up already was the right side so since we have 46 and a half i like to do on my pocket hole screws for this i like to come in on one inch every six inches then six 12 18 24 30, 36, 40. Now we have six and a half inches, it's a little too close. So I'll come back and I'll just add another inch. Same thing as doing this. And there's my pocket hole screws for that. And then do the same thing for this and then add the stretchers. Oh, 
course, measure it again because these pieces are so close. I like to do this so you don't drill the pocket hole screws on the wrong side. We have 18 inches, so we know we need to put our pocket hole screws going into this side. So we'll come across here, do the same thing. One, six, 12, flip it around, one. I like to keep everything consistent, so I'll do the same thing on this side. So that's how you do that. All right, so it's time to put this together now. So here's the back with the pocket hole screws, and then I'm gonna grab one side. So I took the time also to just edge band all the panels that are gonna be exposed. It just makes everything look a little nicer. So I also make sure when I'm doing this, put the worst looking side on the inside and the best looking side on the outside. You get the point. Here's the stretcher that I was talking about. The reason why I like to keep them at the exact same size as the back because then it really helps square up the cabinet. And this is how it should look. So you got your back, your two sides, your lower stretcher, and your upper stretcher all put together. You can't even tell that there's any pocket hole screws because they're onto the back. Okay, so these are the slides or the runners that the laundry baskets will slide on. Since the laundry baskets are nine and a quarter, I like to cut or measure up on these eight and three quarter. You will see why once all the baskets are put in. So add a little bit of glue on the back. You don't even have to go crazy with it because this glue is gonna be stronger than the actual wood itself, which most of the people know this. And I use a square and I set it. Now this the line that I put on there, eight and a quarter, gives it a good little gap between. So I put that line at the top. Shoot a couple of rounds until it holds on. dries and then I come up each one and I do eight and three quarter between the slides do not do eight and three quarter and put that underneath because you won't have enough room for the baskets to slide under same thing Now, if this was a stain grade, I'd be going a little bit more careful, but since it's paint grade, I really am not caring too much about if I get a little bit of glue everywhere. If it does seep out a little, good. the paint will cover it. And just keep working all your way up and then flip the basket over, do the other side, and then put your baskets in. Next thing we need to do is make a quick top. But good thing I am Superman and I can uh, make a top like this. Magic. There's the top. All right, and then the very final step, put in your baskets. And you know what? I hear a lot of people say, let's see what it looks like with weight in it. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pop in. I'm just putting some random tools in here just to show you how much weight. And I'm just like deliberately throwing it in there just to show you that 
it can take weight and it can still slide very easy. Keep putting the baskets in so you can get an idea of how it works. And there we go. Four tier organizer. Um, if you like what you've seen, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that and I can uh, keep doing videos like this. Um, I do actually plan to do a couple more in the future. So if you want to see those, please subscribe and you can watch those and you'll be notified when I do post the next video. Until the next one, catch you guys later. See ya.